29. After Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they went over to Simon and Andrew's home, and James and John were with them. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. He went to her bedside, and as he took her by the hand, and helped her to sit up. The fever suddenly left. And she got up and prepared a meal for them. Verse 32. That evening at sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to use for a topic Wait on the Lord. It's important to talk about wait because most of us don't like to wait. Even you say that sanctified and dignified folk don't like to wait. The Negro will come out of you sometimes when you gotta wait longer than you want to wait. I had that experience this morning on my way. I thought I better get a buttered biscuit before I get over that old pill. And I stopped at Hardy's in Spartanburg. I had ample time to get here in time for Sunday school. Some of us missed it this morning, but that's all right. Hopefully you got next week to come. And I got my biscuit. Well, before I got my biscuit, I started to get in line, and the person that was pulling me in from another direction at the same time that I was pulling in looked like they didn't want me to get in front of them in the line. So being the sanctified sister that I am, I just drove on around the park and got out and went in. Not a soul in the restaurant. But three people at the front took five minutes to get to me. The first little boy that came up, he came to the register down there. And I was over here, so I walked down here to the register thinking he was going to greet me or at least say, hey. Not a word came through his sealed lips. He, I guess he was clocking in for the morning, turn around and walk right on out. The next one had was busy and about came closer to me. I thought, okay, I'll come over here. Got over there and all she did was talking into her little earpiece. She was running the drive through. The next one finally came on over. We'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> many more minutes, I'm going to have to wait. Finally, she came, took my order, and she was pleasant, I was pleasant, I left, I got here on time, and my biscuit was good. And my potato tarts were good. But it taught me a good lesson that some of us, how many of you don't like to wait in here? Tell the truth. Don't like to wait. But sometimes waiting is good. Sometimes waiting prevents you from getting to something that you ought not get to. The fact that some of you wait one or two seconds when the light changes keeps you from being in a car wreck. The fact that some of you didn't marry that person that you chose made the biggest difference in your life. You waited and you found out some stuff about them. And they probably found out some stuff about you. Waiting is essential. And so while we're talking about that, I found three quotes that I liked about service because sometimes we go to these restaurants expecting good service and we don't get it. And the ones we remember are the places where the service was bad. The ones we talk about the most is where the service was bad. Here's what this one quote says, to serve is beautiful but only if it is done with joy and a whole heart. When that girl brought me the fan, that was with a whole heart. When the young lady made the necklaces, and they are absolutely beautiful, I, I think I'm going to have to find me a blue suit to wear next time so I can get one too. <laughs> Wholeheartedly, not expecting something bad. My husband used to tell me, if you're going to cook and do this for me, do it like you want to do it. When we do it complaining, even the children of Israel got in trouble for complaining. The Lord does not like that. Yet you came out of Egypt, but you're still complaining because it ain't no food like you want. The onions and all the other stuff back in Egypt. Now you want to go back to where I brought you from? Many times that's the way we are. Do it with joy and a whole heart. Another 
quote said, whenever you serve someone from your heart, the food tastes a whole lot better. Can I get a witness on that? your life, not knowing at that time that one day you will need to be served. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on living. And you're going to find out that you will need the very hand that you're handing to somebody else. Keep on living and that ought to promote you to serving in the right way. Yeah. I wanted to say happy hospitality day to you today, but I was corrected to call it the sanctified servants day. Yeah. Because it is all right to have hospitality, but if you got hell in your heart, it ain't working for us. <laughs> Don't you know I know when you really need your handshake and hug? <laughs> Don't you know people know when you really smiling at them or when you looking beyond them just going through the motion? shows us a true servant's heart. It shows us that in relationships, in reality, and in restoration, you need Jesus in the house. How many of y'all got Jesus living in the house? That's a good thing. That's a good thing that Jesus is in the church, that Jesus is already here before we get here on Sunday morning. But don't you know that it's important to get out of the church
the in-law. Don't raise your hand, don't say anything. Don't lean on, don't nudge your neighbor, don't cut your eyes and go. Some of y'all got some cantankerous in-law. Some of you can't stand them. And they can't stand you.